And people often ask, what is um, money backed with? And the truth is money is not backed with anything. It has never been backed with anything. The euro is not backed with anything in particular, and neither is any other currency in the world. And gold, for example, for that matter, is not backed with anything either. Some people think that gold has value because we use it for jewelry, but it's, other way, it's actually the other way around. Um, gold is valuable because it's very scarce, and because it's very scarce, it has been the best ledger we've found in 5,000 years. In, in Bitcoin, we have something that is as good uh, a ledger as, as gold, meaning that it's, it's incredibly um, scarce. There will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. It's even more scarce than gold. A lot of people are just seeing the charts and thinking how high it'll go. But what I'm doing is ca counting backwards. I mean, this is a transactional this is a transactional currency and it is a store of value. As such, it is a product and a service competing on a very tangible market for stores of value and for transactional currencies. So what is the, what is the size of that market? Right, and this and is important. How, and how much, how big a market share can Bitcoin realistically take within a, a uh, foreseeable time frame? Right. When you ask that question, then you come up with a, with a market cap of Bitcoin total. And then you divide that by the number of Bitcoin in circulation by that by your estimated time. And seeing how Chinese are buying Bitcoin like crazy, I actually had to adjust this number upwards. But then you come up with a number of about two to five million okay. dollars per Bitcoin. Is Bitcoin the currency of the future or is it the payment system they're developing? Bingo, it's the payment system. It's the blockchain encryption. And there, there are interesting things, I think, Bitcoin or the really blockchain encryption that's behind it has a greater ability to bring more of the world's population out of poverty than anything we've seen. Bitcoin at first glance is uh, digital money, but if you look a bit deeper, you realize that that is just one of the applications enabled by an underlying network that allows a distributed system of computers to build a global asset ledger. So like a list of transactions for the entire world that shows who owns what Bitcoin when. And that's based on a really fundamental invention that allows computers to coordinate in that way without a central authority. Bitcoin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill. Okay? We are entering a completely world of uncharted water Have right now. Have you made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. Because what you're talking about right now is for the next three to five years, an unbelievably better store value. It is gold 2.0. Do you think this is a currency, a currency that's really going to work eventually? Well, I think it is working. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, there is no Bitcoin company. There is no uh, Bitcoin building. There's even, not even a Bitcoin server anywhere that you could shut down. It is completely distributed. Um, that's what's unique about Bitcoin. It is, for the first time, a way for the two of us to exchange value online without a third party intermediary. Until the invention of Bitcoin, for you and me to exchange money online, we had to employ a third party, like PayPal, like Visa, like MasterCard. You'll see Bitcoin trading at 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Rick Falkvina does an excellent analysis. He predicts that Bitcoin will capture between 1% and 10% of the global Forex market, which implies a price of between $100,000 to $1 million per Bitcoin. Most of the people who are on the sidelines not buying Bitcoin today will start to buy Bitcoin when it gets over 1,000. Mm. And then a greater percentage of people will definitely plow into Bitcoin when it starts to get over 10,000. It's still predicting Bitcoin, $10,000 per Bitcoin in three years. Jeff Berwick is with us. He's an early Bitcoin investor, and he thinks that Bitcoin's going to keep on going straight up. And did you tell me during the break, I know you did, repeat it for the viewers, you think it's going to go to a million dollars? I don't think it's going to go to a million dollars, but it has the definite potential to do that. You're yeah. talking up your own book because you own some Bitcoins, and you're, you're just going to try to make them go up. Um, well, I'm not doing anything except for saying what I think is the, the actual truth in the case. So. What's your connection to Bitcoin? 
Uh, my main connection is I'm incredibly excited about it. Bitcoin is a revolution in money and banking, the you, same way that the internet was a revolution in communication. Well, in what way are you part of it, other than that you own a Bitcoin or two? What's your part of it? Well, I, I write the dollar vigilante, and our big part of what we talk about is the dollar is going to collapse. And so I'm very excited that there's other alternative currencies coming out from the free market. The world is in financial disarray. Currencies failing, economies in wild flux, jobs being lost. But what if you could build an entirely new economy, one specifically designed for the digital realm? Well, that is the dream behind Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, for those of you who don't know, is an electronic online currency that was created in 2009. Uh, it was made by someone who did it under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. Because some people have said, hey, Bitcoin is the answer to those problems. Are you a believer? Well, Bitcoin is exciting because it shows how cheap it can be. Uh, Bitcoin is, is better than currency in that uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a currency on the internet. I sent 100 euros worth of Bitcoin from here in Tokyo directly to you guys through this camera, through the network, through the TV, right into your home. If I had tried to do that, send you the money with a traditional bank, it would have taken several days and probably cost 30 euros. I just did it right now with Bitcoin instantly, basically for free and didn't have to ask anybody for permission. I didn't need a bank, I didn't need a government, I didn't need anybody. I just needed myself and you and our smartphones to do it. That's the power of Bitcoin. This community is switching to what they think is a better monetary system. A system in which banks are no longer needed because payments could be made directly from one person to another. Bitcoin is fundamentally different because in Bitcoin, you don't owe anyone anything and no one owes you anything. It is not a system based on debt. It is a system based on ownership. And no one can censor it, no one can seize it, no one can freeze it. It's November the 2nd, 2008, just six weeks after the Lehman Brothers collapse. And all over the world, there are panicked debates about how to save the banks. Then, on a little visited web forum for cryptographers, a document appears in which a completely new monetary system is proposed. The visionary author calls himself Satoshi Nakamoto. These were the darkest days of the financial crisis. So that to me suggests a very clever mind uh, that saw an opportunity, the perfect opportunity to introduce a new radical technology and a new radical approach to money and finance at just the right moment when people would be very open to making this big shift that's required to adopt a new currency. What's exciting for me is like a global economy. Right now we say we have a global economy, but I can't take a dollar and give it to you in the Netherlands and then you know what to do with it, right? You would have to go and change it to your native currency. Um, and when you kind of eliminate that step and I can just send you one form of payment and you can send me a product in a matter of seconds, that starts to change things from a from a global perspective. How could this digital coin invented by this Satoshi Nakamoto become hundreds of times more valuable than the dollar? And why do enthusiasts like Roger Fear want the world to switch to bitcoins? Back in the early days, you know, I'd get phone calls from my buddies, oh, hey man, I lost 10,000 bitcoins because my computer blew up, right? Back then, one bitcoin was less than a penny, right? So nobody cared, they lost $10, they don't care. Right? And now 10,000 Bitcoins, that's you know, $5 million. That's a big deal, right? Bitcoin is a decentralized electronic cash system. It uses peer-to-peer -peer networking along with digital signatures and crypto graphics to generate currency. Now with traditional money, think dollars, the euro, pesos, you've got a central bank like the Federal Reserve. They issue the currency and they print more or less cash as needed but not with Bitcoin. It looked very different to me. I mean, as soon as I heard the word decentralized and the fact there was a network powering this currency rather than a central issuer, that immediately captured my interest as something quite different based on what little I knew about alternative currencies at that time. The government couldn't come in and shut down a server and end Bitcoin. It would have to shut down the entire internet or turn off the electricity grid. 
to, to stop Bitcoin. And so that was really attractive. So gold is kind of hard to divide. Bitcoin divides down to eight decimal points instantly, super easily. Gold is really, really difficult to transport. If I want to transport gold from here to Moscow, it'll cost a bunch of money to do that. And it's dangerous and you have to have armed guards and who knows what. With Bitcoin, I can send Bitcoin from here to Moscow or, or to Holland instantly, just like that, basically for free. I don't have to pay for a bunch of armed guards. It just happens almost like magic. If you ever ask somebody why they think gold's valuable, they can't ever really tell you. They always give you these like, weird stories around, oh, it's like a precious metal, isn't it? It's, it's pretty. While we think it has all this intrinsic value, this intrinsic value of gold has been largely constructed uh, in people's heads, often by actually like association with power, association with religious figures. Um, Bitcoin um, has potential for similar types of construction. Uh, he undermined the ability of every single government on the entire planet to control the money supply. And that's how every single government in the world is controlling their citizens and their economies today. And he just basically, you know, knocked their feet right out from under them with the invention of Bitcoin. And uh, I'm sure that's going to make a lot of people who want to control other people by force really, really upset. You can buy Bitcoin at the Shell Station. Check it out. Zero to $2,000. Put your phone number in here. Put the code in. Scan it. Got my reader. Oh, I gotta put the cash in. Good. Got two dollars. Hit finish. Oh, two dollars in Bitcoin. Just like that <laughs> from this machine. I just turned cash into digital currency. <laughs> so thinking that that it's too late to get involved in Bitcoin is like thinking it's too late to get involved with the internet or too late to get involved with using a cell phone. Like, it's not too late to get involved in Bitcoin. If Bitcoin becomes really popular all over the world, Bitcoins are going to have to be worth at least tens of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars per, per Bitcoin. So thinking it's too late to get involved with, with Bitcoin is like thinking it's too late to get involved with, with using the internet. Of course not. Like, it, it's ubiquitous in our lives and Bitcoin's going to become ubiquitous in our lives as well.